Uh, not now. Oh my gosh. So welcome back everyone to, well, day three for me in this garage now and uh, it's late in the afternoon. I've only just managed to get in here annoyingly because there's some other stuff I have to deal with this morning and I'm just <laughs> working out what to do. So this is the state that I left the car in last night. I've been trying to get the lower control arm back over the ball joint. Obviously I lost a bit of time yesterday because I noticed one of the ball joints that I fitted, where is it? Was actually bent, which was very strange. I must have done something wrong, but that's how it looked after, well, bolting the control arm back on. So I don't know what I did. It was probably when I was messing around with the CV joint and the ABS rings and all of that sort of stuff. But uh, I'm gonna give it another go now. Fresh as a daisy today, so I'm gonna try and see if I can knock it back into place now. Now before you rush straight to the comments section, I have to admit to you, I feel like an utter moron editing this video. Thanks to all of your comments on part two about how a ball joint, well, it doesn't really bend, does it? But at the time filming this, I was still unaware. But again, this is just something I will never ever forget now, thanks to all of your comments. Okay, so as you can see, I've now detached the bolts that hold the hub to the shock. So this is unsupported and, and very heavy and not probably the best thing to be doing for the, the drive shaft. But there's just no way, or at least I don't have the strength, to lift this enough into a position where I can then pry down the control arm and get it all into place. I just don't have... I need, I need one of you watching now to come and pry this down for me whilst I position the hub into place. Um, I, I don't think, I just, I just don't see any way that I'm going to be able to do this ever. So, tomorrow, I've got the garage for one extra day. I might try and call on a friend and see if they can come and just help me with this. I think instead of wasting more time on this now, I'm going to have a look at the fuel injector situation. Because uh, that is also something that needs addressing. I would also say there is, I could, I could support the hub with a, with a jack, which I have tried, but I find that the hub then gets stuck onto the jack and I can't manoeuvre it enough. So I'm just not quite finding a combination that works. I'm just going to try this one more time. Oh, come on, you <sighs> So clearly after so many hours trying this over the past few days, it just seemed I wasn't having any luck and it would be best to move on. I hammered the bolts that secure the hub to the shock back into place so that the hub was supported when I was working on the injector. Then I just needed to lower the car on the lift in order to gain easier access to the engine bay. I've been going 10 minutes and I've already, I mean, obviously I was stupid to wear white trousers, but I've already ruined t-shirt, trousers. I'm probably gonna ruin my Crocs too, which I know they're not the most sensible shoes to be wearing in an environment like this. But you guys are probably more concerned by the fact I'm wearing Crocs in the first place. Okay, car lowered as uh, much as it will go whilst the wheels are still off. Now, one thing we should do definitely before we look at the injectors is get the car up to temperature. So I'm going to start it now, if I can unlock the thing. Which will probably be a good thing to do because I've been running it quite a lot with the lights on and obviously not starting the engine. So hopefully it does start. Car's in park, handbrake's on. And the battery's dead. Well, in that case, I better trickle charge it then for a bit. Ah, oh, the fun never stops, does it? Well, luckily for me, at least this was one job that would be easy, as the battery covers were already out of the way from when I disconnected the battery to change the wing mirror. That saved me one job at least. 9.7 volts, it says on the battery. So uh, it's definitely in need of a charge. Right, let's set that. We'll leave it a couple of hours. And I suppose I should probably have a look at doing, well, I should do the headlights really, shouldn't I? That's the, the next best thing we can do. So in this box down here, we have a new 
machine polisher. And I'm quite excited about this, and the reason I needed a new one actually is because, well, I never had one properly, uh, but the last time I did try and machine polish, it did not go well. It was on my Audi TT, but I tried attaching machine polishing pads to the end of an impact driver, which I later found out was a very bad idea, and I paid the price for it by getting thwacked in the nuts. That really hurt. <laughs> Okay, so I think the driver's side is the worst side, so let's get started on this. I've got some quick wax. I'll just clean up the area around and slightly glaze over the light before we start. I haven't actually got any masking tape to do this properly. I'm gonna close the bonnet there as well, just in case. I haven't actually got any masking tape, but I've got wipes so that we can clear up any mess we do make. And again, it's not like the paintwork is in the best condition in the world anyway. And then uh, we've got our machine polisher all ready to go. Now the polish I'm going to be using for this is K2 Lamp Doctor. Apparently this uh, renovates headlights. And so let's see, we'll use it sparingly to start with and see how we go. I'm not gonna do all the sanding and stuff because I'm confident this is going to make the difference that we need. So if you're like me and you work from home, you'll find there's quite a few periods of downtime where you're looking for things to do, fun things to do, and games to play. And that's why I want to talk to you today about Gaminator. Gaminator is a super popular app in the UK that looks and feels like the legendary Gaminator slot machines. There's a huge selection of more than 200 casino slots, games such as Big Base Bonanza, Gates of Olympus, and lots more. The app has exciting features like slot battles, slot escapes, team leagues, and team missions, which you can play with your friends, and a progressive level up system that allows you to unlock even more slots and better bonuses. Once you've chosen your slot, you just spin until you win. Yes. So if you head to the App Store now, search for Gaminator and download the app for free, you'll get yourself a welcome bonus of up to 70,000 coins. Use the link on the screen and in the description. Thank you so much Gaminator for sponsoring today's video. To get started then I sprayed some quick wax over the lens, probably not the best product to use but did this anyway before giving it a wipe just to remove any dirt and to smooth out the surface as much as possible. Then I applied some of the Lamp Doctor paste to the headlights and began to polish. I have to say for about 15 quid I was extremely impressed with this machine polisher. There is something just so satisfying about cleaning headlights and this seemed to be doing a good job. So no beans are these perfect now, but if you compare them to the other side, which I've not yet touched, yeah, you can really see the difference. I can see how that would not get through an MOT. It's clearly the projection is hindered by the foggy lenses, but on this side now, that's surely good enough, right? So we can do an imaginary tick on our headlamp lens, seriously defective items then. The next one we're going to move on to is exhaust emissions exceed manufacturer specified limit. Now, if we take a look at our report from Volvo, one of the items on here is, can you spot it? I'm looking for it now. Injector three blowing and leaking. So that's what we're going to look at now. Uh, I've got a fuel injector with me that I ordered, just one. Uh, I know it probably would be better to replace all of them, but I was aware of time, which I'm glad I was. It's not as quick as I thought it would have been all of this. And they're actually quite expensive. This even used was 30 pounds. So to do five of them would be, you know, quite expensive. So hopefully we'll be able to get injector three out. It should be pretty obvious if that indeed is the one that's uh, causing problems and replace it. But uh, you know how these things go. It might end up being a bit of a task. So presumably, injector three is this middle one here. And actually, yeah, you can see straight away, there is a pool of liquid there in the middle injector, which presumably is injector three. There's five of them. It's a five cylinder engine. I always get confused by that. I always think it's four cylinders, but it's actually five, right? Um, there's, there's a pool. So 
theoretically, we can take this injector out and swap it over, and that should solve, well, it should fix that injector and potentially help with our emissions. I am still waiting at this point for the car to trickle charge before we try and start it. Uh, it didn't take long to do the headlamps, so uh, I'm just gonna let it charge for a little while longer. While I wait, I'm just gonna give the engine bay a little bit of a tidy up, just literally a wipe down, uh, which will just make it a bit nicer working in here. I've begun to clean the engine bay blissfully unaware that I was about to encounter yet another issue, but it was nice to give it a little bit of a tidy up in here anyway before starting work. Once I'd given the engine bay a little bit of a wipe down and while still waiting for the battery to charge, I thought I'd have a little fiddle with the injector anyway and immediately realised that I was going to need a 15mm spanner. Frustratingly, this was literally the only size I didn't have. It's always the way, isn't it? Whatever you need is the thing that you're missing. But as it was so late in the day, I wasn't going to be able to go and get one right now. So I've put one on order for tomorrow. And in the meantime, I decided to have one more final look at the anti-roll bar drop links instead. I started underneath the car on the lower bolt and used my breaker bar to try and crack it. Finally, it felt like I was getting somewhere, but it wouldn't really matter if I couldn't undo the top belt as well, so I had a look at that. On this upper bolt, however, guess what? I couldn't quite seem to get the same luck. No matter what I tried, I just couldn't get the bolt to break loose. Potentially, I could have tried to use my blowtorch and apply some heat. However, I wasn't sure a frustrated Joel with a blowtorch would be the best idea. I've seen other people mentioning about just cutting the old drop link off too, However, I didn't have this equipment available to me and probably also wouldn't trust myself with it either. I'm absolutely shattered, guys, and nothing is really going well today. We did the headlamps and that makes me happy because they look so much better. We've done the wing mirror. But annoyingly, these are all things that I could have done on my driveway. So I've rented this garage to try and tackle the, the bits where you need to be underneath the car properly. I mean, you can always do suspension on your driveway, but I mean, imagine I was trying to do this whilst lying down. It would have just been impossible. I think, unfortunately, that lower control arm down there, that's been the thing that has really slowed me down because I've spent so much time trying to get the lower knuckle onto the, the ball joint and I just haven't been able to do it. Hopefully tomorrow I can have a friend, like I say, and we'll be able to get that done and then focus on some of the other bits. But at the moment, we've just done a wing mirror in the headlamps in terms of actual completion, which is a little bit of a shame. But, you know, what I will say is that despite whether we successfully get this car through the MOT or not at the end of the week, I have learned so much. And can I actually just say, I keep thinking this, but I haven't said it to camera yet. Next time you go to a garage, uh, a specialist or, you know, a garage where you can see that people are hard working and decent, honest working men or women do not complain about the, the labour price. I mean, the effort it takes to work on cars and the knowledge and also the risk because you, you know, you're working with very heavy machinery. Obviously not all cars are going to be like this to work with, neglected and probably not touched for 20 years and 300,000 miles. But just in general, I've got utmost respect, even more so now for uh, people who work in workshops on, on vehicles and service my cars, do my MOTs, whatever it is, um, massive respect to you guys. Because I've, you know, I've, I've stood and watched people for videos work on my cars before, but I've never really done it myself. And it's really properly hard work. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of skill, a lot of strength and tell you what, I'm absolutely shattered after three days of it. So fair play to you guys that do it day in, day out. I will promise never to complain about labor charges again. At this point in time, I was pretty much ready to leave for the day. I'd come in a bit later than I'd planned anyway and really hadn't been able to do much. I didn't have the right spanner to get the old injector out. I couldn't get that stupid control arm back in place and the anti-roll bar links just wouldn't budge either. However, before I locked the door for the day, I just had one more burst of willpower and wanted to have a final go at getting the control arm over the ball joint. 
I really didn't want to have to ask a friend to come all this way to help with something that I couldn't do. And I can't believe what happened next. Okay, I think I'm actually gonna cry. It's getting dark. I was meant to leave an hour ago. I'm a mess, but I <laughs> just managed to lower the, lower the hub into the control arm, I think. I used a floor jack, put the car down as far as possible on the ramp, and uh, I, th I think we're in. Let me, let me see. I've done it, all by myself. Sorry for the low light, but uh, there's the control arm, black bit, the nice fresh new looking thing. And I've managed to lower the hub onto it. Now I've probably damaged the ball joint by doing that because I had to be very rough with everything. So I've probably actually caused more problems than I've solved. And also I know the, it's like the CV boot or whatever that is there that attaches the drive shaft to the hub. That's taken an absolute punishing. So who knows what problems I might have caused doing all of that, but I don't care. I am so pleased with myself. That's two days in the making, really. I've been stuck on that. Obviously, I've done other things as well. That's two days it's taken me to do that. I'm probably gonna just put all the bolts in finger tight-ish for now. And then tomorrow when I refresh, I'll come in and, and make sure they're all talked up to spec. But that, that's made my day, thank God. Praise be to Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm so happy because I've got to be out of here tomorrow, as I've said, and if I couldn't get that control arm back in, I wouldn't be able to get the wheel back on, I wouldn't be able to drive the car. And that would cause all sorts of problems, like maybe having to get it recovered out of here. Extra cost, and just a sense of being defeated, but I think we're okay. So this is by far the best news of the series. This was the one thing I was deeply concerned about and I finally managed to get the control arm in place. Before I left for the day as it was getting dark outside, I just wanted to secure the nut to the ball joint to make sure the control arm was being held properly in place. However, it's just one issue after another, isn't it? However, I suppose it leaves me something to do for tomorrow. I was only meant to have this garage for three days, but amazingly, I was able to get an extra day of rent. And so you will be seeing a part four in here where hopefully, hopefully we can finalize all of those final bits that need to be done ahead of this car's MOT. Thank you all so much for watching this series so far. I'm so glad you've been enjoying it and I cannot wait for you to see what's coming next. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. And I'll see you very, very soon.